Hey, I'm Zach from Now You Know. Welcome to this episode on our Boring Tunnel Future. On this episode, we're going to reveal a type of project that the Boring Company could soon be building and how this could easily make the Boring Company one of the most profitable companies in the world. You see, to date, the projects that have been publicly disclosed as possible Boring Company tunnel projects have all been break-even to money-losing public works projects. Moving people from downtown Chicago to O'Hare Airport is a great idea for Chicago, but it won't generate much revenue for the Boring Company from a long-term perspective. The same is true for the Dugout Loop, the Las Vegas Convention Center project, the Las Vegas Strip, and every other public works project that a locality would pay for. This class of project uses the Boring Company like a road building contractor. The Boring Company will get paid to do the work, but will not participate in long-term revenue, whether or not the revenue would result in profitable enterprise. And for these public transportation systems, many would not be profitable. The Boring Company would gain useful experience, period. Once the Boring Company has built its first urban boring tunnel project and the huge benefits to society are realized, as we discussed in episode two, the Boring Company will begin a new class of project, what we're calling Golden Goose Projects, because as we'll show you, they are going to be unusually profitable. This class of project consists of tunnels built beneath existing freeways and open to private people with private cars that are able to drive through the tunnels. Instead of elevators within the city interior, access to these tunnels will largely be via in-ramps placed at normal freeway on-ramp locations. Whereas it costs $25 million on average to add a one mile lane to a freeway in the US, and it costs on average about 43 million in California, it is expected to cost only 10 million to add a bi-directional boring tunnel along an existing freeway corridor. This means for tunnels, the cost per lane mile will only be $5 million. This is nearly one tenth the cost of a lane mile in California. This episode discloses the corridor where the first of these Golden Goose Tunnel projects is likely to be built. The 74 mile long corridor from Fountain Valley, California to Thousand Oaks, following I-405 to I-101. Included in this corridor is the initial section from Hawthorne to Bel Air. The importance of this particular section is that it is Elon Musk's personal commute route between his home in Bel Air and his work in Hawthorne. Building this tunnel section will enable Elon to transform his commute, often more than an hour, into an 8.5 minute breeze. Building a bi-directional tunnel along this corridor will also serve as the initial phase of a longer project from San Diego to Seattle. The construction of the section of tunnel between Los Angeles and San Francisco and continuing across the Golden Gate to Santa Rosa will create the first high-speed ground transportation connection between San Francisco and LA. Completing this stretch will beat the California high-speed rail boondoggle. Elon Musk said of the California high-speed rail that if built, it would have the dubious distinction of being the slowest system in the world that costs more than every other system in the world. To build a West Coast tunnel from Mexico to Canada requires that construction must begin somewhere, and the best place for construction to begin will be along the portion of the West Coast tunnel following I-405 and I-101 from Fountain Valley to Thousand Oaks. This is a 74 mile stretch of 405 and 101 freeways that suffers unusually high traffic essentially 365 days a year. As I'm speaking right now at 10 a.m. Pacific time, I can see on Google Maps that this journey has several stretches color-coded red where stop and go traffic exists in spite of the time being 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. To drive that stretch right now, Google estimates it would take 100 minutes to traverse the 74 miles. The average speed would be 44 miles an hour. In most cities, traffic would be freely flowing after the morning commute. In Los Angeles, however, traffic is an all-day problem. This stretch of freeways is consistently congested and in desperate need of a solution. Within a Boring Company tunnel, the entire 74-mile journey would take just 37 minutes, no matter what hour one chooses to make the trek. But what's possibly more important than the 120 mile an hour speed is that within the tunnels, because the journey of every single car is planned from entry to exit prior to entry being allowed, travel is always consistently at 120 miles an hour. Traffic within the tunnel system will never ever be stop and go. The same cannot be said for the special toll routes in the LA area, which in spite of high tolls being charged, 
still wind up with stop and go traffic during rush hours. To drive the freeways, one would need to remain intensely focused on other drivers potentially crashing into you. To use a boring company fully autonomous tunnel, one could sit back and relax. Meditate with your eyes closed, read a book, watch a video, eat a meal, send emails, or take a nap as there would be absolutely nothing for the driver to do while inside the tunnel. Okay, so what? Tunnels have a lot of advantages that surface freeways don't. Great, but that doesn't necessarily make building and operating tunnels a good business to get into. So why are we suggesting that this 74 mile tunnel is going to be a golden goose for the boring company? As we previously discussed in Hawthorne, California on December 18th, Elon Musk disclosed that it cost the boring company $10 million to build the slightly longer than one mile tunnel used for the tunnel opening event. He also disclosed that they were developing new tunnel boring machines expected to significantly improve the pace of tunneling. It is therefore logical to assume the cost per mile of bi-directional tunnels will be about $10 million. So the 74 mile initial bi-directional tunnel from Fountain Valley to Thousand Oaks will cost $740 million. And the first 17 mile portion of that section running from Hawthorne to Bel Air will cost about $170 million. The next side of the business equation is what the income might be. After researching what commuters living in the Los Angeles and San Francisco urban areas are currently paying to drive during higher traffic periods, we find that tolls run between 25 and 35 cents per mile. Today, people driving internal combustion engine cars are already paying 20 cents per mile just for the gasoline. Therefore, it seems reasonable to ask for at least 20 cents per mile as the toll for EVs that do not pay for gasoline in order that those EVs benefit from using the tunnels. The last piece of the equation we need in order to figure out the business prospects of tunnels is the number of people that are expected to use them on a daily basis. This is the only real unknown. Will people be afraid of tunnels and not use them? Or will people flock to the tunnels to escape stop and go traffic? I suspect the latter answer. LA traffic is horrible and any way to escape it will gladly be adopted by most. Within tunnels, autonomous computers on board the EVs combined with the tunnel control systems are watching every move at every moment along every inch of the tunnel system. What's more, because tunnels are one way only, there is zero possibility that two cars can collide head on. Tunnels will be dramatically safer than freeways where people crash every day. For most people, the ability to travel at 120 miles an hour without any stop and go traffic will be sufficient to convince them to give the tunnels a try. And once a person is able to travel reliably at 120 miles an hour, going back to surface freeways with stop and go traffic averaging 20 to 40 miles an hour will be intolerable but how many people per day might use one of these tunnels? It turns out that the number of vehicles using a freeway can vary a lot. Many freeways only have a few thousand vehicles per day passing a point on the road. Others have 300,000 or even 400,000 vehicles passing a location. This makes clear one attribute a good route for a tunnel will have. It will have a large number of people, the so-called average annual daily traffic number. To reach break even, no matter where the tunnel is built, is going to require approximately 5,200 vehicles making round trips. So to break even, the boring company must build the initial tunnels in places where 5,200 round trips for 10,400 daily tolls are generated. This level of usage is break even, no profit and no loss. The route proposed here has approximately 200,000 to 300,000 daily vehicles depending on location. The toll of 20 cents per mile to use the boring tunnel will actually be the same as the cost they were paying to fuel their cars with gas before. It's not unreasonable to estimate that at least 25,000 commuters or 50,000 tolls per day will choose to take the tunnel option to avoid crippling traffic above. So the boring company will spend $740 million to build a 74 mile tunnel from Fountain Valley to Thousand Oaks, California, and collect $270 million per year in tolls. Within three years, the tunnel construction costs would be paid for from toll income. How does this compare to a real toll road? Well, several years ago, a Canadian pension fund paid $2.8 billion for the 7.8 mile Chicago Skyway, expected to generate toll income around $280 million per year, so that the fund enjoyed a 10% internal interest rate of return. The proposed boring company tunnel is about 10 times longer. The annual revenue is about the same, but the cost to build the tunnel is about one quarter the cost paid for the Chicago Skyway. 
clearly the tunnel is the better business proposition. One aspect that may not be obvious is the fact that the Boring Company is going to increase Tesla EV sales. This is because wherever the Boring Company builds a tunnel, people are going to purchase EVs to be able to use the tunnel. And if Tesla is the only company selling EVs with tunnel approved software, then Tesla will win 100% of the sales to people that want to escape freeway traffic. We expect that along the proposed route studied here, approximately 200,000 new Tesla EVs will be sold in the first two years after tunnel completion. The value of this business is approximately $9 billion. If we assume a $50,000 average sale price at a 25% profit margin, Tesla would profit about $2 billion. The synergy of these two companies is obvious. For long distance tunnels, such as a west to east coast tunnel following I-40 or I-10, the tunnels will install solar and wind farms to power blowers to reduce the energy needed by vehicles using the tunnels. For every 100 miles the Boring Company builds across rural America, the tunnel cost will be around a billion dollars. Out of that, approximately 200 million will fund construction of solar and wind farms with battery energy storage and blowers that will be constructed using Model 3 motors coupled to fans to blow air down the tunnels. The high profits will fund the rapid expansion of the tunnel system, and with that expansion will come a rapid increase in sales of tunnel-capable EVs. This will also speed the end of ICE vehicle manufacture because they will not be allowed into the tunnels and few people will choose to purchase a vehicle that cannot use the tunnels. The more EVs that are sold, the more routes will become profitable for tunnel construction. Tunnels will provide the positive feedback for the acceleration of the EV revolution that steamboats on canals did for the revolution from sailing ships to steamships two centuries ago. If we extrapolate from the first 74 mile tunnel, we can see that the financial metrics of building 1,000 miles of boring tunnel in the LA basin is highly profitable. For every dollar spent by the boring company, it will generate $5 in assets. The Boring Company's annual income will be $3.29 billion and the net worth of the 1,000 mile tunnel system will be over $50 billion. That's a bigger market cap than Tesla today. Once the Boring Company has built about 1,000 miles of tunnels in the LA Basin, the traffic in Los Angeles will have undergone a radical transformation from the worst traffic in the world to the best urban traffic in the world. And the air in Los Angeles will potentially be cleaner than it has been in a hundred years. In 2028, the Olympic athletes will appreciate that improvement, as will all the kids that won't get asthma after the air is clean. Once the first highly profitable tunnel is built, everyone will understand that tunnels are going to fix our failed surface freeways. The latest video showing a car traveling at 127 miles an hour through the tunnel is just the beginning of this tunnel transportation aspect of the EV revolution. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Stay tuned for part six, where we will learn about the implications of life with boring tunnels and what will it mean for all of us in our boring tunnel future. Now you know. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.